Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential log equation. We have x to the power 1 minus log x equals 1 over 100. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods. And I'll also show you a couple of graphs at the end. All right, let's get started with the first method. So even though I told you that I was going to show you two methods, uh, there is kind of like a third way to approach the problem, which is slightly different than what we're going to do. Anyways, maybe we'll talk about it if we have time. So for my first method, I'm going to log both sides, which is a pretty standard method for solving these kinds of equations, especially when you have a variable in the exponent. So let's log both sides. And by the way, log means base 10. In case you didn't know, for all the problems on this channel, log is always base 10. Okay. Now, properties of logs give us a lot of good, you know, good things to do, such as moving this power uh, to the front or bringing it down. So we can write this as 1 minus log x multiplied by log x equals log 1 over 100. 100 is 10 to the second power. Since it's the reciprocal, I can write it using a negative exponent. And in this case, it's going to be 10 to the power negative 2. All right, so far so good. And obviously, we can bring this power down just like before. Go ahead and bring it down to the front. And that's going to be negative 2 times log 10 but log 10 is 1 so you can totally forget about it and this is going to become negative 2 okay so we got this equals negative 2 let's go ahead and rewrite it 1 minus log x actually instead of rewriting it let's go ahead and distribute and then set it equal to negative 2 so we'll take one more step 1 times log x is log x minus log x times log x can be written as log x squared some people write log squared x, but that I guess that notation is not uh, universal or very standard, so I'm not going to use it. Instead, write it uh, as log x squared. And this is equal to negative 2, as you can see here. Okay, what does this look like? If you said quadratic, you write about that. Let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side so that log x squared becomes positive. And then log x is negative, and we have a negative 2 or minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so this is factorable. This is factorable. Obviously, you can use substitution, but I'm going to try to avoid it because I'm saving it for the second method. But uh, this can be factored into log x minus 2 times log x plus 1. Because what happens is log x times log x is log x squared. And then everything else just uh, follows apart. Okay? It just falls apart, I meant. <laughs> so this is equal to 0. And from here, we get two factors. And we set each factor equal to 0. So if you set this equal to 0, log x minus 2 equals 0. This gives you log x equals 2. And this means because the base is 10, this means x is equal to 10 to the second power or x equals 100. Notice that we are going to have two solutions. And the second piece gives you log x plus 1 equals 0. That implies log x equals negative 1. And this implies x equals 10 to the power of negative 1. And from here, we can write the x as 1 over 10. So we got two solutions, 100 and 1 over 10. Those are going to be the two solutions. And notice that 1 tenth is very small compared to 100. Okay. So, that, those are the solutions. So, that's the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And then we'll talk about a possible alternative. If you want to call that third method, that's fine. Anyways, so let's rewrite the original equation x to the power 1 minus log x equals 1 over 100. And then we, for our second method, for our first method, notice that we 
logged both sides base 10 because that was justified. And the reason for that is we have log x in the exponent and we have power of 10 on the right hand side and the base is x. Make sense? Okay, there's a good reason we log both sides. You could also ln both sides, but logging would be much, much better. All right, so here's what we're going to do with the second method. We're going to use substitution because substitution is powerful and substitution is awesome. That's why. Okay, could do two good reasons. So let's go ahead and call log x y. And you might be asking why we do that because we need to choose a variable and I chose y. If you want to choose a different variable, you can choose it. And from here again, base 10, x becomes 10 to the power y. So notice that we can basically um, put something like a two-way implication here because if x equal to 10 to the y and you log both sides, you're going to get log x equals y. So that's the nice thing about logs because anything exponential can be turned into logarithmic and vice versa. Anyways, x equals 10 to the y and log x is equal to y. Let's go ahead and do the substitution. So x will be replaced with 10 to the y and log x would be replaced with y. So it's going to be 1 minus y and we're going to have 10 to the power negative 2 on the right hand side. I just wrote this as 10 to the power negative 2. As you know, this is 1 over 10 squared and that is 10 to the power negative 2. That's what negative exponents means. It doesn't mean the number is negative. It just means it's the reciprocal of some number with a positive exponent. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to go ahead and use the superpower property or the power of power property on the right hand, I mean on the left hand side, and we'll go from there. So these two exponents are supposed to be multiplied, which gives us 10 to the power y minus y squared equals 10 to the power negative 2, which gives us y minus y squared equals negative 2. Makes sense? Because the bases are equal, so are the exponents. And you should compare this to this one. You're going to notice some similarities, right? Because remember, we replaced log x with y, and here we didn't. But it's the same thing. Make sense? Okay, so that's the type of connection we, I would make with the, between the two methods. Anyways, so if you put everything together, you're going to get this, and then this is factorable into this, and then from here, y equals 2 and y equals negative 1, but y is log x. This implies x equals 10 squared, which is 100, and this implies x equals 10 to the power negative 1, which is 1 over 10. So those are going to be the solutions, and the third method, really quick, is going to look like this. You can basically write this as uh, log 100, I mean 10, I meant, log 10 minus log x, and then this is going to become x to the power log 10 over x, and then that's equal to 1 over 100, and you can just go from there. A slight variation. And I'll show you two graphs, because first of all, I want to show you the graph of x to the power 1 minus log x, see how it curves, and then I'm going to zoom in and show you the intersection point. But guess what? Only one of the intersection points. Why? The answer is hidden in y, because the, y, the second y value is going to be very, very large. Okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.